this is Summer with Summer's Tips and Stitches and we're in my halfway tidy kitchen. Um, yes, that is a Christmas tree. <sighs> Y'all, it's been up there for 10 years. Those Christmas decorations have been up there for about two years, not 10, two. And yes, I need to take them down, but out of sight, out of mind, and I got way more yarny things to talk about and do than take down Christmas decorations. So I just wanted to give a heads up because I took pictures when I was dyeing yarn and put it on my Facebook. And some of my Facebook friends were like, hey, is that, a, is that a Christmas tree above your head? So yes, Christmas tree. Okay, so I have a yarn dye video coming out, hopefully for y'all by Thursday. I had such a great time. I loved it. I'm addicted now, y'all. I would like to dye yarn forever. Um, if I had a mind for business and knew all the things that I would need to do to start my own business, I would totally do it. Um, but I don't. I don't have the mind for business. I don't want to make my hobby a business. So I'm just fine right now at dyeing whatever yarn I want for myself and maybe sharing some with giveaways or if somebody asks, maybe make them one, but not go crazy. So, because I spent so much time this weekend dyeing yarn, drying yarn, soaking yarn, and all that, I didn't prepare an idea for a video today. But then I got a comment, I think from my Knit Crate opening, and I've actually seen this comment quite a few times. I haven't made a video on this before because I thought there's other folks that have, um, but then I thought, you know what, why not just make one? What's one more? And besides, if you already know how to do what I'm gonna show y'all, then you can just watch and chat and look at my messy refrigerator or my Christmas <laughs> decorations. Okay, so here it is. I'm gonna show you guys, for those who have never really used hanks of yarn, um, how I, a couple ways, two ways I'm gonna show y'all, well, two and a half sort of, um, how I, cake or ball my yarn. Okay, so these are the Knit Picks yarn. This is um, the Auden Wools. This is Auden Wools Halo DK. I actually in the Knit Crate had gotten the lighter color, the, the aqua, and I made the actual Knit Crate pattern for my sister and gave it to her for her birthday. Um, but I loved it so much. They had a deal and I had some stash points that I bought three of these. Well, there's only two right now because I gave one away in a giveaway, not a giveaway, a swap. So I'm down to two, but then when I won Holly's, um, it's my birthday mystery shawl, mystery crochet along. I guess I'm getting two more. So I'm gonna show you guys how to open up this beautiful hank. I'm gonna show you the tools that you can purchase, which can be spendy or a couple of quick ways that you can try to do it on your own. It's really not as fast though as this. Um, the tools that I have, if you are interested, I do have a Stan, a Stanwood yarn winder. Right here it says, get that up, Stanwood. Now I, pardon me, I do have a small Hobby Lobby winder. It costs $20. I made a video a while back I made a video a while back about it because I was talking about the difference between this one, this one is approximately $50, and the $20 Hobby Lobby one. Now, I personally am not a fan, and I did get some really horrible comments on that video. In fact, somebody threatened to sue me Ooh, on behalf of Yarnology. Um, so if you have the budget for a $20 yarn winder, head on over to Hobby Lobby. But if you have a gift or a birthday or something coming up and you can invest a little bit more, please get a Stanwood. Now, I believe I saw Debbie and I think Rose Likes Crochet. They have a different yarn winder. So I'll put a link in the description for sure to Rose because hers just, she just made it the other day. She has kind of like a little, a little, I don't want to drop this, a little thing that sits here and it kind of twists up. Now the one bad point to this type of yarn winder is that it can't go on something that has a lip. It has to be flat. So I usually come up here, even though I have my crochet corner, and I, cro I do it here. So 
I have this like little screw. Got to wind that thing down. I just quite a bit actually. Um, oh. Got to get this thing onto the table. Oh, still not far enough down. I actually a lot have this um, set up downstairs a lot of times. If I'm going to just cake up leftover yarn, I do it down in the basement in my crafty corner. But if I'm going to do a hank, I come upstairs and do it because, oh my gosh, I'm having a hard time with this today, friends. If I'm going to come do a, a hank of yarn, I come upstairs because I don't have enough room anymore now that I move that side. You know, I put that bookshelf on the side with a bunch of yarn. I don't have enough room on my table for everything. What I'm saying is I need a crafty corner that's bigger. So now that I've hooked this on here, um, I'm very fortunate the Stanwood does not have anything on it that's gonna scratch the table surface. Uh, you'll see that in Rose Likes Crochet. She put something underneath hers because she's had some damage. Now, the other thing that you need, if you're gonna take this and cake it up, is a Swift. Now, again, I got very lucky because my, my mother-in-law and father-in-law bought this for me for my birthday. And this is from Knit Picks. <clears throat> I honestly have no idea how much it costs. Um, but this, just like the other one, goes right here on the table. And this, whoo, pushes up and makes it, I say like an umbrella, but this has to be called something. And you put your yarn around there. Now, there are cheaper ones. Um, there's some metal ones with like blue plastic straws and whatnot on them. I will put a link in the description to other Amazon Swifts. Because I know you can get them as cheap as $10. I want to say this one from Knit Picks was probably like $30 or $40. Because I got it for a birthday present. Maybe more. Um, but I do know that they have some re reasonable $10 ones. And my local, well, Iris's was a local yarn shop. They closed up. They had that metal one with the tubes. Like It looks like straws, blue straws. So you don't have to go and buy some big fancy schmancy thing. And to be honest, if it were my own money, I would not. But I got this as a present. So, But anyway, you put this, let's show you, right here on your what's that called the brim the lip the edge whatever you put that on here on your table and let me tell you what folks this just barely fits my countertop like if it would be one tiny bit thicker it wouldn't and now i'm going to push that up yep okay so now i've got my nitpicks thingy in place ready here to spin around i got my yarn winder right here now it's time to hatch into one of these now i always save these because i am part hoarder i save those and i tuck them in the middle i'll show you so you're going to want to untwist your little bread of dough thing your little bread yarn your hank um what they do is they end up tucking them in so you're gonna pull this out, and then you have this nice big circle. Mm. Now, friends, don't cut anything yet until you have it on your Swift. So let's come on over here. Now, my Swift, I believe, is, um, I have not tightened it yet, because you don't wanna stretch out your yarn. And I just, Hold on to it and carefully put my yarn around it. Okay, when I feel like I've got the yarn stretched out, I move this, I got this little ball thing that I move up and I tighten there. Okay, so now I've got my yarn all the way around a Swift. Now folks, don't worry. If you don't have a Swift, I'm gonna show you one and a half other ways to do this, okay? So just bear with me. Now, right here, are these little strings. They're usually, if it's a good yarn person, 
usually it's a different color. Sometimes they do have it same color, it's really hard to find, but it's always, almost always smaller. So you just snip those, pull them out. See there, dingle, throw them on the floor. That's what I do down, that's actually what I do down in my crochet corner. I just throw it on the floor. But up here, I'm gonna have to pick it up. Okay, now, as you see, this one here came out and it's tied onto here. This is my little thingy that I just snipped. And this is the beginning and the end of my yarn. Can you see that, friends? So, now you just gotta snip this off. There it is. There is where it was attached. So now, now this is what I do personally. It is not a requirement. I take this end right here and I kind of loosely tie it around one of these arms. Now, why do I do that? So I don't have that other string just flapping around while you're turning. Okay, now we're coming over here. Now, <clears throat> you take this one right here, this other one, and you weave it through your Stanwood or whatever yarn winder. For me, I have to wheel it through this little spring, then I come around up front and I poke it through this, this little hole right there. See this arm? And then I put it right here. That is how I, each yarn winder is gonna be different. They're gonna have pictures or a brochure that tells you how to get your yarn in your little contraption. And then you just start cranking. And while you're cranking, this little thingy is spinning around. You'd like to keep a nice consistent speed. It's also good to be able to do this when you don't have people bothering you. Because sometimes I find it's difficult to start and stop. Plus, once this thing gets a spinning, it when and you stop winding, it still keeps spinning and it can cause knots. But this is this is how it goes. You just I really highly, I think my number one suggestion is don't snip those little connectors until you have your yarn either on the swift or on whatever it is that's gonna hold it in the circle. If you start snipping those before you have it laid out, your yarn's gonna start get tangled. Now this can go a bit faster. So look at that cookie fly. Um, and this is ideally, this is what I did. Now I will say, even if you use one of those cheaper little yarn crankers, winders, you're gonna have to at some point, the easiest method is this, getting the yarn swift and the yarn winder. Now, if you're buying your yarn at a private yarn shop, most times you can ask the salespeople, can you please cake my yarn for me? And they'll go wherever they have their yarn winder and their swift somewhere in the back and they'll do this for you. I suggest doing that. Now, if you're getting your knit crates, which is specifically why this video was requested, you obviously don't have that luxury. Now, back in the day when Iris has opened, I would not have felt embarrassed to go to Iris and ask her to cake my yarn. She was a very nice lady, very nice yarn shop, and she probably would have done it for me. Um, so, like I said, this is the ideal way. The number one tip is do not snip your ends, your little threads, until you have your yarn stretched out on your swift because that's just easy. You put it on your swift, you adjust the, the little knobby and for the right tension, and then you sniff it. Now, here you go. Here is my perfectly caked up with little yarn. I take my end here and you just tuck it in. Now, this label that I saved that talks about my yarn, I fold it up. I put it right here on top of my um, yarn winder and I poke it in there so that way whether it's Karen Simply Soft or whether it's a Knit Picks or whatnot I put it in there okay so now you're saying I'm so happy for you Summer that you were blessed with this wonderful gift from your mother-in-law but 
I don't have one and I don't see that I'll be getting one in the near future. And I don't want to click on your links below to buy one off of Amazon. You can do two different things. Now this one is not going to work ideally, but you see how this chair has two knobs? You can possibly find a chair, maybe your dinner chair is wider, these are little bench chairs, and you can, let me open this sucker up, you could possibly stretch it between two chairs. Now, I'm gonna have to move and show you my other chair in just a sec. Okay, so what I've got here, friends, is I have these two bar stools, and I, I put it here, right around here. Now, you can snip these ends right there, and where's the other one? Oh, right there. And you can ball your yarn from this position. Now, the trick with this one is making sure that your chairs are far enough apart that it has the tension. This is not ideal. It's not ideal. The problem with this is your chairs might slip and then your yarn's gonna slide down. Um, for me, it's not too bad because, you can't really see there, ready? You see I've got these cushion or these seat. This is not ideal, I'm gonna be honest, but it's something that you can do. I actually had to do this. So you just snip, first thing is I got my yarn opened up. I put the circle of yarn around my chairs and now is the time that I would cut them because everything is laid out nicely. If you cut before, you could end up with snarls. And as you can see with the knit crate, I've never had one that came out real snarly. Um, I did have one from a different yarn shop I bought a couple years ago that did have a real rough time. But so this is a second way, okay? Using two chairs, stretch that between them, okay? Now I'll show you the final way. And this is the way that I did nine times out of 10. Like I said, I tried this once or twice. I didn't love it because of the tension lacking. I suppose I could have had a kid sit on these chairs, but you guys know what it's like to make a kid sit down for too long. They're up and flying around. The other thing you could do, and I used to have my husband do this, is he would hold it like this. And he would just move his arms as I was bawling. Yep, that's what he would do. He would just stick his hands in here. Now, if you have a wonderful child that would probably hold still, or maybe one that will accept a bribe, then you could have, <laughs> I wouldn't really do this with a child younger than eight or nine. Like Flynn, no way, no way would he hold this long enough for me to wrap. But maybe Jaren or Maddie would. And definitely my husband would. He did this quite a bit. So those are the ways. Now, again, you get the yarn on your hands or your partner or whoever's doing it for you. And then you snip. You snip the one and you snip the second one. I also would put the other one pretty close to where Brandon's hand was so he could hold the other end. Because remember, they're all tied together. These little thin cords are the ones you cut and these big, that's the actual yarn. And I would have him hold one while I balled from the other end. So this is, this works if you have a willing partner. And then I'm gonna be honest, don't, don't abuse them. <laughs> don't have them hold five kinks in a row. Cause I can tell you already right now, my arms are getting sore. And especially if they do this to help you they're not going to be too happy about it because you have to have a little bit of tension. So maybe just one every couple days. So that is how you open up these, these uh, little yarns. I'm going to pause and show you guys one more time how to get it on the Swift. That way, um, those of you that have the Swift can't. Otherwise, as you can see, these are all twisted up. You just untwist them. Sometimes you can even shake them out and get your arms, get your partners, get somebody's hands <laughs> inside of that yarn. Or you can use the chair method. Okay, let's pause and put it on the swift one more time because that can be tricky. Okay, so I have my yarn all open, untwisted. 
and I delicately put it around my Swift. And as I'm doing this, I don't know if you can see, as I'm getting it there, then I push up and I get the right tension. You don't want it too tight and you don't want it too loose. My yarn Swift has a little knobby that you put up and there you go. There it is, it's on the Swift. This one is almost ready to cake up. Where did I put my scissors? <laughs> I was standing right next to him. Y'all see that? You'd cut this first one here. This is a light blue, or this is actually a little bit darker blue. Make sure you're cutting the thin ones. Throw it on your floor. Come on over here to where I cut it right next to that knot. See that? There's the knot. Here's the thin one. That is actually the yarn that they're using to hold together. Do a little bit more cutting. This looks like, this is the one on the outside. So just be, so I don't have two strands flap around, I loosely tie, like if you're tying your shoes, that first little knot. So now I'm ready to hook it up to my to my yarn winder, my good old Stanwood. That's it, folks. That is how you can get these. Now, I want you also to know, there is, sometimes it gives you, do you see how it's giving me a little bit of grief? It's okay, folks, it'll work itself out. Um, ooh, there's actually kind of like, you know what it is? This is alpaca yarn, and so it's a little furry. Okay, so the only one thing I'll tell you that I don't love about the Stanwood is the Stanwood has a little nut right here. Maybe I'll bring you in. Hmm. Right here. Whoa, whoa. Can you even see it? Yeah. There. There it is. See that little wing nut? What happens is that is holding this arm in place, this one right here. And so sometimes if this turns out to be a real, you guys, I'm happy that you're seeing this because this yarn is getting caught up on itself. The yarn tall is perfect as at first. But anyway, if this arm has to do too much vibrating, you hear it? It'll kind of loosen itself and then that arm will flop off. So that's the only thing that gets to be kind of annoying for me, is that nut. Sometimes I have to have my husband come tighten it really well for me because he's super strong. But yeah, now you saw how that first alpaca went real smooth and this one's catching on itself. It happens, not all of them are perfect. Some of them do have issues. If you notice you're having one that's kind of struggling like this, don't go super fast. Just just keep it clipping normally because otherwise you could have, um, you could stop winding, winding, your Swift can stop and get caught up on itself and it'll go backwards. Ugh, this alpaca yarn sure is a shudder. Okay, folks, well, I'm about to go, I'll stop this for now and then I'm gonna head on downstairs and make another video for you. I'm gonna finish up the end of the dyeing video so that my husband can put that all together for you guys on Thursday. So there it is, folks. That This video is all about how you take your hank and you turn it into a cake. All right, thanks for watching and subscribing, and thanks for looking at my cute Christmas kitchen. Until then, happy crafting. Bye.